Okay, if you wouldn't mind just telling us your name, your job, and mm -hmm. who you work for. So I am uh, Salvador Diaz Pacheco, Jaime Diaz Pacheco. I am a lecturer in the University of La Laguna, uh, physical geography in the Department of uh, Geography and History. And now um, we have a chair on disaster risk reduction and resilient cities. Um, and we are uh, studying the risk uh, under a holistic uh, perspective. What does that mean, a holistic perspective? We integrate everything. We, we deal with uh, risk as a complex uh, phenomenon. We know that in the, the risk of disasters that we study uh, is integrated by three factors and uh, the hazard now the hazard we are talking is a volcano the exposure uh, how many buildings or people or uh, goods are exposed to the hazard and uh, the other part of the risk is the vulnerability so and uh, the vulnerability is uh, the, the most important part for us so not only the hazard and we are convinced that we have to reduce the vulnerability to reduce the effects of the disasters. And what is what reduces the disaster? The resilience, our capacity for adaptation. We have to improve, uh, uh, and we have improved it. If we compare this uh, uh, disaster now in La Palma with the last disaster in El Hierro, that it was in the water, but it was a disaster, also economic disaster. I think we have improved our uh, capacity for, uh, for response and also our resilience. So this is our per perspective, just to work in the human, uh, in the human part of uh, the disasters. So we have to improve our societies. Okay. Just so we have an idea, there's lots of different specialists under this chair and they're not just yeah. Volcanologists, what, what's, what's the range of disciplines that are represented in, in, the, in the chair? Yeah, mainly uh, we are mainly focused on hydrometeorological uh, hazards, so floods, uh, flash floods. Uh, also, we study the landslides, and in my case, I am uh, in a mix because I know to simulate different uh, hazards. So. I am working with floods, with landslides, with uh, volcanoes and lava flows. But uh, for us, it's not only important the physical part. So we are uh, computing always the vulnerability and always not computing only with numbers because the resilience uh, is not measurable only with numbers. So we have to know exactly if a municipality has a plan or if they are developing the plans and they are practicing, they are make uh, some training. So it's difficult to measure the resilience, but we are trying to do it and to talk about this thing. So when we started um, a few years ago with Geo Tenerife, for example, uh, and we had some meetings with politicians and I said, right, you have all these tourists coming here, nobody knows this is a volcano. Why mm. don't you talk about this being a volcano? <gasps> <laughs> we don't want to scare out the way the tourists, you know, we don't want to talk about this being a risk. Is that changing? Well, with, with the eruption, obviously, it has to change. How, how do we now talk about the Canary Islands? Yeah, what is changing? Uh it's not the volcano and the hazard. What is changing is uh, our society is all nowadays more complex. All the coast is uh, covered by activities. We have more uh, highways, more roads, more residential areas, more tu big touristic areas. And uh, this is uh, what actual uh, the, the politicians are afraid about it, not about the hazards, because uh, the volcanoes uh, appear every 40 years or 50 years and we don't know exactly where, because in Canary Islands it's very difficult to know where is going to be the next uh, volcano. So the population uh, and the administrations, uh, what are afraid when we talk about uh, an event of disasters is because of exposure. Uh, they know that uh, if a volcano appears now in every, uh, every place in, in, a, in an island, the things are going to be different than in the past. 
very different. And now after this uh, episode in La Palma, mm, they are going to be more worried about uh, the future because it's resting it's in our memory now. Yeah, it's quite difficult uh, to make that the politicians mm, pay attention to risk. Um, why? Because uh, it happens not, uh, it's not very frequent, what, uh, that, uh, this kind of episode. So, it's difficult to convince uh, the not not all not only the politicians but at all the populations that something can happen and we have to be prepared and we are not used to be prepared for something that is going to happen uh, in 20 years ago even if you think now about the people in La Palma the people who live two or three kilometers uh, away from the lava, do you think that they are now preparing the house for evacuation? I don't think. So for society, so for the human being, it's, uh, it's something uh, that is uh, difficult, not only for politicians, so it's difficult to think about tomorrow. We think about what we have to do today and we are not thinking that our house is going to be buried under, under lava flow. So. And that's why we need people like you to, to do the thinking for us somehow and, uh, you know, yeah. put it in our faces, they think about this, talk about this. Yeah. So let's go back to El Hierro. What plans were in place before El Hierro erupted? We so have plans for response. This is very developed. But we have a plan for risk reduction. What is now that mm, few uh, countries have. Only in South America, a lot of countries have a plan for risk reduction. And everybody has to attend these plans. If I have a, a transport ministry, we have to implement risk reduction policies for transport. If I am working on agriculture, we have to incorporate these policies in this. This is a a strategy for risk reduction or a plan for risk reduction. But what we have in general, all the countries, not only uh, all the regions, not only Canary Islands. So what we have is response plans, just to act during the disasters. What we don't have is a plans uh, to prepare people, educate, to make conscience before. So we have to, to work after the disaster. And all the plants are ready to be used during the disasters to respond. In 2010, we have Pevolca, Pevolca 2010, where we include uh, and the El Hierro wasn't included in this plan as an area of risk, you know. El Hierro was not included because... Uh, but it's the youngest island, it's the one with the most activity. How, there how was an historic, had... historic uh, eruptions in El Hierro. Uh, not historic, but we have in the Quaternary and also in the last 20,000 years, but not historic. So Pevolca so was two, based just on historic eruptions? In 2010, uh, it was a plan, Pevolca 2010, not before, but just in this year. But El Hierro was not included as an island with, uh, with this hazard. But after we made the Pevolca 2018, and in, yes, after 2011, now El Hierro is included. Okay. So that meant when El Hierro happened, mm -hmm. there, were, there was no plans in place for an, an emergency of that type in El Hierro in 2011? It was, it was the Pevolca, the Pevolca uh, but it's for all the Canary Islands. So uh, mm, we have also island plan, island plan. La Palma now has uh, an island planning. We made it. Tenerife ha, has now an island planning. But then in 2010, uh, 2010 El Hierro has an, an emergency plan for the island. But we have Pevolca for all the Canary Islands. And I think it's enough. Yes. So we had a plan. Yes. But it was the first time when we used the plan, and the plan was approved in 2010. It's a plan for response, and we used it with many uh, fails. For this reason, 
Now we have Pevolca 2018. Yes. Uh, 2000. This Pevolca is better. Can I just go back to the beginning because I'm trying to hacer memoria. Uh, was the was Pevolca set up in 2010 because we'd had lots of earthquakes in El Hierro, or was it just ca casualidad? Was it just by it's, chance? It's by chance. By chance. <laughs> by chance. They made the plan and La Palma was included in, in the risk areas, mm -hmm. also Tenerife. Um, I think Lanzarote also. Because of the six year yeah. eruption, yeah. historic eruption, yes. But El Hierro was included. Yeah. So, what went wrong? What lessons did we learn that were useful in El Hierro? What, what went wrong with Pevolca? What, uh, what we learned in, in El Hierro in 2011. Uh, was that we must have a plan for response for the island because the people who act in the island at the beginning are the people who are in the island not the people who come from outside so we have to make a plan a local plan now they are developing it still they are developing it we have now one for La Palma another for Tenerife the emergency plans are uh, made uh, to manage the resources in El Hierro, what, what things didn't work with Pevolca? Okay. In El Hierro, uh, in Pevolca, was, uh, what worked very well was the coordination between the parts, the structure of the plan. Because the plan has a director, a scientific committee, committee uh, also have a, the operative part of the plan, the people on land. These people work very, very well because they are used to working in forest fires, but the head of the plan sometimes fail and also the scientists used to fail because they are not coordinated. And this is something that we have to improve. Now in La Palma it's better. We have a head coordinating all the scientists and you can notice this because, because the information is, uh, is good, is better. And uh, now if you read the reports of La Palma are better than the reports from El Hierro. The IGM now are very qual qualified experts on earthquakes, on the rocks, on the kind of rocks if, mm, on the volcano. And you can notice it. The, and the coordination between the different uh, parts of the scientific committee are working better than in El Hierro. Why did it erupt on yellow? Ye yellow? Yes, the uh, traffic light. Ah, okay, That's what okay. You want to know. Good, good Let's question. just explain what good you want. Question. Why, why did well, the volcano erupt on yellow? Yes, because we, uh, the scientists uh, really da, uh, don't know uh, when the volcano is going to make the eruption. We don't know. We have to be honest, we don't know. They know the days approximately when the, the volcano is going to make an eruption. Mm. What's the point of the traffic light? So you, but they are not used to the traffic lights. They use the traffic lights uh, uh, until the yellow, but after the yellow, I think they are not using the lights. And even now we are in red. The only light that it was in there is the, the orange. But now we are in red all the time. But orange was key, I think, because orange would have said to people, be ready, you could be evacuated mm -hmm. anyway. There is an eruption. Okay, we all understand that it might not come out. We're, mm -hmm. we're sophisticated enough to know we can't say the exact date. Mm -hmm. But by going from yellow to orange, there was lots of things that would have come in place that were important. I think the point is that everything is explained in the plan. But nobody knows the plan. Of everything is right because I, I do it so I know I know the plan and now for us I know that the plan was in a box I know but this is between us I can say but the plan was finished on 2008 we did it and we uh, okay say so here is the plan but the, the island plan not the Pevolca the Pevolca was finished before 2018 also but we finished the plan in La Palma because they were worried about the uh, earthquakes. So they, they called me. So we need, uh, n nobody made it before, a plan for an island. So we, we were the first team here in Canary Island to, in preparing this.
this and we do it and the traffic lights in the plan are copied from the Pevolka. We, we didn't make up anything and okay yellow in yellow we have to uh, inform to the population about the hazards about the volcano and be ready maybe in case to evacuate you don't have to evacuate but be ready it happened on Friday, I think, or Saturday. And Sunday, uh, the eruption will start. start no? But they evacuated on Friday, I think. They started the evacuating some people with reduced mobility. Okay. So my question so is, they obviously they, they put the, red, the, the yellow, and they never used the orange. And even, I think, the red also wasn't in the social media. Or not, uh, because I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe because they were not ready. The people who is working, who are working there, they told me, I start to study your plan in two weeks. I read everything. They didn't know the plan. They, they, and they are the operative, the people who work in these emergencies. I think they didn't believe that something were going to happen. But all that work that you put into making that plan, isn't that a bit heartbreaking to feel that it hadn't been read? They, they should use it, but they, they are not using the, the traffic lights. And I think they are not using it because the people are not related with this information. With the meteorological hazards, the population is quite related. So they know when a yellow uh, alert is now coming, everybody knows. But with volcanoes, nobody knows because you have to spread the plan. But this comes back to what we were saying earlier. If you go to the beach and there's a red flag flying, you know what that means on a beach. And we're very used to seeing yeah. that. But for example, the local Volcanology Institute here has tried very hard to have their um, guayota information mm -hmm. in all the hotels, for example. They say in every hotel there should be the guayota there, telling people we're on yellow, we're on red, what, what yeah. does it mean? But we haven't, we haven't dared to do that because we thought people would okay. be put off. So the answer, you have the answer, and maybe you too, <laughs> is the education and the information of the plan they have to be shared with people before, not during, before the plan. And during, of course, yes, you have to make a big effort. But all the work is before. This is what we're trying to explain. And the last part of the plan say implementation of the plan. And all the implementation is about to go with the neighbors, uh, with the, uh, in, the, in the neighborhoods, uh, in all the little barrios. Here we have a hazard and this is a traffic lights. And if we have to evacuate, we have to do it. it they didn't do it. I don't know why, because they, because they don't invest time and well, I think to be fair, the local to volcanology institute went around all the municipalities. Mm -hmm. They say we have this Una Ventana Atlantico, they have their meetings, and maybe two people would come. So yeah, I know. People are not that interested. Uh, even in, in Volcano, it's doing it a lot of the. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's difficult. You have to visit the, the, the little villages and talk with the people. You almost have to start with the schools, I think. I think and children, even school. children are always children. much more engaged than adults. Uh, probably well. children know better than us. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, but you are right. You are so totally you, right. Yeah, yeah, this is a really important thing and, and one of the lessons mm. I think we want to look at for the future. So if we, if we go back to the traffic light, is it you who developed the traffic light alert system or you just used it from Pevolka? Uh, we use uh, in the island planning, we use the same traffic lights uh, from Pevolka. Okay. Green, yellow, orange and red. And we, uh, the authorities, have to use these uh, lights because the, the people know what is yellow, what is green. Green is calm or uh, almost calm. Yellow is be alert. Orange is be very alert and red is the emergency. Is there any point having green though? Because green just makes people think, oh, everything's fine. I don't need to think about it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't mean that everything is fine. Always we have to be prepared for, because a volcano can appear, but 
it's difficult to nowadays it's difficult that a volcano appears without a previous uh, alert it just happened quickly this uh, time okay but of course uh, in the plants the traffic lights are very well defined and in the plants is written what we have to do in every stage of the emergency everything is written but we have to share this information with people with all the people not only with uh, um, the people who work in the emergency that also but not only with these people everybody has to know that in yellow we have to evacuate or we have to start to prepare the evacuation mm. in orange we have to evacuate and in red is imminent we have to abandon the area where we live and everybody has to know it why they don't know because to, to we have to make a big effort for education consciousness everything that we have to make before the, the disaster so one of the reasons that we have been told by somebody very senior that they hadn't moved up to Orange is that they felt that the levels didn't fit what was happening volcanically. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was difficult to make the traffic light fit what they were seeing on the ground. Mm -hmm. Is that something that will be revised now? I think that something that we have to revise is, okay, the traffic light is theoretical. Never happen everything like in states that sometimes the states Cross it one with the other. But, uh, um, okay, the idea that I want to, okay, I recover the idea. Okay. Something that we, we can innovate from the traffic lights is um, to divide the areas where the, maybe the traffic lights uh, can be in green in one area and in other area can be in yellow. This is an innovation that we have to apply in the future. And also we write about it in the plan. When we have, uh, not today, rain, we have a very sophisticated uh, early warning uh, plans or early warning systems for meteorological alerts, because every day we have one, or every day or every month, but with the volcano is different. So one innovation that we can apply to the volcan uh, volcano emergency is uh, to alert, to make different alerts or different traffic lights for different places. For example, maybe in one village we have a green uh, traffic lights alert and in other we have red because the lava flow is coming or in other is in orange because we have to evacuate so maybe this is one innovation that we can uh, incorporate in plants and another thing uh, they were saying to us is that they didn't want to evacuate too early or raise to orange too early because people would get tired of hearing it's imminent oh no 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 oh it's imminent oh no no mm -hmm. so people perhaps need to understand that sometimes um, yeah that's that's quite difficult. This is happening in the green state, the green to yellow. It happens all the time and it's difficult to, uh, to act and to know what to do in these cases. And even the administrations, they, they, don't, they don't want to make uh, fake alerts. So also it's difficult. Uh, in the future, I think this is something that we, we can't avoid because uh, we have a lot of instruments today to measure the earthquakes and a very light earthquakes can be measured and we, we have uh, to, to create the alert or to make the, the warning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's quite difficult. I think it's the, for me it's uh, the more difficult part. And so exactly when to declare uh, the alert, it's, it's not easy. Even in this, in this time, nobody knows exactly when the volcano is going to erupt. And is there any political pressure not to change the alert? Uh, I, I don't think 
but the scientists uh, are not able to say uh, hard we have to change to orange because tomorrow a volcano is going to appear they, they are not able to do it because we, we don't have all the information that we need to do it uh, we know not me, but the scientists that are watching the volcano, they know exactly that maybe in the next days, but they are not sure, so they cannot transmit this information uh, very hard to the politicians, because if they do it, maybe the politicians will say, okay, if you say that tomorrow a volcano is going to appear in this area, I'm going to evacuate. But we don't know. This is this isn't true. There are times, from what we've seen, of seismic swarms in the Canary Islands where we mm -hmm. are asking why isn't it even yellow? I mean, why aren't, you know, there's stuff going on. Mm -hmm. We're talking about all of these earthquakes, we're talking about the gases going up and down. Why isn't it at least on yellow? So there's a real reluctance, I think, and I think we've got to get over that. And in case of We yellow... have to stop being reluctant to change the traffic light, surely. Mm -hmm. I know that the scientists uh, say that we have to change to orange, but they didn't change, I don't know why. But they, uh, they say we, uh, we must change to orange and to evacuate. And they decided, uh, decided that the day before, I think, they say, um, was not bad, but uh, no, no. a short time to evacuate. Yes, I know. I mean What's extra and I'm sorry to insist on this, mm -hmm. but I think for the future it's important. The day before the eruption, mm -hmm. when we all believe it should have been on orange and we should have been evacuating, they had a car rally in, you know, uh, the Rally Isla de la Palma, <laughs> la Rally Isla Bonita. We mm -hmm. had a car rally and you looked at the areas it was in and it was literally in the areas where the volcano came mm -hmm. out. I mean, is it responsible to be having a car rally? I don't think, even when we have these uh, earthquakes, uh, even before in 2018, when we have the signals, we have to not change maybe to orange, but yes, to interrupt all the activities and to be ready for uh, evacuation in case, just in case, because we don't know where the volcano is going to appear. This is the problem. But everybody has to be ready and the activities maybe has to be Suspense, suspend. So it was not responsible to have a car rally in that week? Uh, no, it shouldn't happen. It is not responsible to, uh, to make activities uh, during, a yellow, during the yellow or the orange uh, traffic lights of the, uh, the early warning system. We have to interrupt public activities, important activities that we have even. In the hotels, we have to. Uh, we should have information about the, the the lights, and everybody has to know that if we are in yellow, all the important activities where the population is going to be concentrated. All the people uh, in this stage uh, have to to start thinking about. Go yeah. out of the so this, this area. I'm sorry to insist, but the car rally for me is extraordinary because I've been at car rallies here, <laughs> and there's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of people, a lot of um, you know, there's there's barriers, there's emergency services involved. So there's a lot that goes into organising a car rally tour stage, mm -hmm. uh, which is tied up in a competition. Which mm -hmm. you know, had the eruption gone off in that area 24 hours beforehand mm. with all of these things in place how do you start how do you evacuate people when you've got all the paraphernalia for a car rally in the area yeah um, maybe the next time we are going to do it but now they no no the reason is because uh, they didn't believe that it's going to happen why they didn't believe because in 2018 we had the same situation and nothing happened. Ah, so things had been cancelled, nothing uh, happened, nothing. so now it's very difficult to cancel okay. things because the last time didn't happen. So, yeah. But now we know what happened. Maybe in the next 20 years we are going to have a memory 
If not, we are going to be here to remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, is there anything else in terms of the plan with the management of what's going on in La Palma now that you feel we can do differently next time? So if you're revising the plan for La Palma, what, what changes beyond the traffic light, which I think we've sort of probably hammered to death? Well, we are uh, thinking only about the response, the response plan. But what is really important, they are not the, uh, the response planning, but the land planning in long term. The response plans are not bad. The only thing that we have to do is to inform to the population, to make the implementation of the plan and to train uh, the operative and the people in general. This is a, that we have to improve and the coordination between the scientists. But the problem now, after the, the disaster, the main problem is to know exactly what to do in the future with the, uh, the houses that were there, the crops. We are going to make the crops again in the same way or not. Uh, hard decisions to make. But I cannot answer uh, now this because um, the people from La Palma have to decide. And what I am sure if uh, if we want to make a better land planning, we have uh, to integrate uh, all the stakeholders to make it. But it's not. Uh, I think it is not good if I am a scientist now say what is going to happen in the future uh, over the lava flows or where um, are the best places to, to, uh, to implant the activities. I don't know exactly now. We have to make an assessment and then um, we have to think what happened with the volcano, what happened with the disasters and I, I am not uh, able to make it. To, an opinion and know about it. Can we just break that down because I think there's several things that are interesting. Um, on the one hand, the thing I found difficult to understand is although the measures were in place to manage the emergency, it seemed a bit haphazard um, how the evacuees were, you know, there wasn't a plan in place immediately mm -hmm. on how you managed the families that were evacuated. In the emergency plans is uh is planning where the people has to be in, in 15 days but after 15 days we don't know exactly they are now in hotels this is something that is in the plan mm, but after 30 days so now are 60 days uh, it's quite difficult now they are building new houses or wood houses in in el paso or los llanos uh, and now they are asking us if where are the safe areas to make it fast. And we have to make a rapid assessment process here. We are now doing it. They are asking to the university and other maybe other consultants. Um, because they need to know where to where, where is the best area to uh, to put uh, the residential areas, even provisional, say? Temporary? Provisional area, temporary, temporary residential areas. So that's interesting. So when the locals hear about these temporary houses going up, they think that's all they are going to receive, but those are only designed as a temporary measure? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, are, they are sure that they are temporary measures. They have a plan, um, another plan for and ubicate the, the people, but they don't know where, they don't know how. So they have to make the assessment, the estimation, everything for recovery. But they are trying to, to make rapid solutions. Brilliant. Uh -huh. So the, the, the huts are a, a, a pro tem, a temporary measure, but longer term, is there a plan to rehouse people in towns like the Todoque itself was a town that was built with mm -hmm. money from, from the eruption in, in, in the, uh, San Juan in '49. I know that now the government is uh, making a plan um, 
to sometimes reubicate the activities and sometimes to keep the activities in the same place um, by occupation of the lava. They know, they, they, they have all the alternative. Even they, the politician says that if we have to change the law, we will change the law. I don't know if it is possible, but maybe if we are talking about the natural heritage, we can we can plan uh, areas to protect another to to develop activities but this is something that uh, currently we don't know they are going to make a plan rapid in one year maybe mm, but it, it is something that maybe you are going to make an interview with someone who has an opinion that we are going to 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 put the, the banana crops again in the same place but this is something that we have to plan and even the stakeholder has uh, to want in, in, to invest there again because maybe nobody wants to invest there or yes, we don't know. Yes, yeah, so we've, uh -huh. we've interviewed some families who say, I want my house to be exactly in the same, the same place, place on the top. And others who say, oh, no, I, no, I, don't I, want to I don't leave want there. It. I will never go back there. I left, I shut my door, mm -hmm. I locked the key and that was it. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's a lot of different opinions. But I think that the, the failure here, if there is a failure, is one of communication because the families don't understand that there is a bigger plan being thought of. So do you think the, the bigger plan is to establish a village again with all its services or just mm -hmm. to give people a little bit of land and say, here you go? Okay, what, uh, what I'd like and um, many other people who know uh, something about the urban land, etc. What we want or what is, is to develop maybe Los Llanos de Aridane or to develop the compact urban areas uh, in the areas where today is uh, more safe. But we have to count with the desires of people from La Palma. So we are not playing with, uh, <laughs> with the land. We have uh, to make uh, workshops or to ask uh, people what they want and then uh, the administration has to decide what we can do. So this is a mix of uh, I guess it has to be in that way. I don't know if I want to count with everybody, with all the stakeholders, but they should count because at the end and they are they, they are the people who are living there. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and they are the future yeah, of that. And they have they have to decide. Mm -hmm. So you can't put somebody who had, you know, banana plantations, lots of animals, lots of space and suddenly expect them to live in a tourist apartment. Mm. Do you mean in the area, in the affected area? Mm. Uh, yeah, but they have the they have the capital to make it. Why not? But that's the problem. <laughs> a lot of the houses were not insured. There are families who are in uh, situations now they're quite exposed. Yeah, the family now maybe they are in shock. So now that what they want is uh, just to start to live again. To, to back to the normality, you know. but I don't know, uh, don't know to think about it, I have no, I have seen, uh, answers. Mm. So I in terms of know. reconstruction though, it's going to take time. Mm. Have you had made an estimation of the losses that we have to date? The losses, the estimation today are near to the 700 million of euros. 700 million euros? Yes. And what does that include? The crop losses, uh, I think it is not included here the transport activity or commercial activity or the flights that are interrupted for five days. But what, what here, what they are calculating, it also the activity covered by assets and by uh, lava flows. This is, uh, we are managing this uh, quantity, 700. Uh, millions, but I think it's quite more. If we can, when we make the estimation of damage and effects on economy, it's going to be more. But the recovery maybe is going to be uh, fast. 
because now the volcano is an attraction and in the future maybe uh, in Teneguia it happened in the past they recovered the, the agriculture very fast and also the tourist activity um, maybe not, like now with the COVID-19 COVID the economy is uh, again uh, growing maybe after the volcano we are going to have the same the history say, say that so if there's damages of 700 million, does that mean the state has to put in 700 million to recover everything? Because the, the amounts that we have seen uh, promised to La Palma are nowhere near 700 million. We don't know because uh, they promise, but, uh, and there is a contingency plan. But is my house, the cost of my house is 100,000. Uh, Maybe I'm going to receive thirty hundred thousand. It's not the same. So the the government is going to help, but uh, I am sure that the the population and the people who is living here uh, at the end they are going to make a big effort to recover or to to build back uh, better to the normality again. So in terms of recovery, what percentage is the responsibility of the state and how much then will the, would you say, the state should certainly provide 30% in terms of hard cash, but then mm -hmm. it's up to people? People think that the, the government helps are going to cover everything, but no, at the end, we have uh, to, to cover, um, everybody has to make an effort to recovery the economy and to recover the house, uh, everything. And La Palma has a great future. I mean, it's been on news outlets. Everybody knows where it is. People have been speaking about La Palma with a lot of love. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the future, it has a very bright future with reconstruction. That this is something that is difficult to understand, but the people that now be suffering the disaster, they don't want to, to hear about these tourists or other activities that are going to be recovered in the future because they need something now. But the people like me or scientists or maybe uh, other people that are far away from the volcano and look it from distance, we know that in the future uh, La Palma is going to be again a, a very uh, beautiful island, rich island uh, and the volcano is is making the island more, attra more attractive. Yes, this is a reality. But now this is uh, this is not the moment to, to, to talk with the family who is suffering about this. No, of course, of no. course. Mm -hmm. um, before we, I just have a couple of questions for about the Tenerife plan. But just a, a couple of things I wanted to mention about La Palma. When um, we have a live volcanic emergency, obviously mm -hmm. it's a a fantastic opportunity for a lot of science to mm -hmm. be done uh, and Pevolca is very good at managing the emergency mm -hmm. but perhaps we haven't been so good at including other potential resources um, to study the volcano so there was nobody who said for example somebody said to us maybe they could have asked who was available what equipment they had so that we could for example study in great de set up three cameras and study in great detail the evolving shape mm. of the cone or perhaps we could have drone flights doing these specific measurements every day and in fact drones were completely banned mm. rightly in some respects yeah. for the early days so okay. have we missed a trick have we have we sort of well the, the yes the, we have to make uh, investments in uh, all the things that are now watching the volcanoes the earthquakes they have to improve the, the way that they are watching, so it needs uh, uh, finances to do it, and it's important not only in instrumental but in people, in people who stay here, who study uh, the volcanoes, but of course the instruments and the tools, uh, it has a cost and uh, the government has to invest it, it in half the infrastructure here, no, no, not only uh, outside of the archipelago. But here it's important to have the people and the instrumental to do it. But also what we have to do is to invest uh, in response 
and maybe to com to combine all the plans because now we have a plan for floods, another plan for volcanic eruptions, another plan for earthquakes. Yes, we have a lot of plans, but the people who work in the plans are the same. So we have to combine all uh, the emergency plannings. Maybe every every hazard is different. A volcano is different, like uh, from the rain. But at the end, uh, all the hazards are. Um, drivers or other hazards you know the volcano now uh, and the ashes are accumulated in the in the land and maybe start to rain and there is going to be mm -hmm. another hazard mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous to have different plans so the people is the same we have to invest in people but with a multi-risk approach yes but in terms of the multidisciplinary approach i i, I accept that there is investment and a lot of investment already mm -hmm. has taken place here. We've got an amazing laboratory uh, in mm -hmm. there. Unfortunately, not very many people have access to it. Um, but there are resources here. But we didn't we didn't use all the other people who arrived in La Palma. So, for example, we didn't say if you get a pass, you have to submit your findings to uh, Pevolka so that we have okay. all the available information from everybody, not just okay. the poor. The, the uh, two or three I understood your point. Now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, in terms of scientific uh, collaboration, work. because yeah. there's a my concern is that there's so much competition in science mm -hmm. that sometimes we forget, particularly in an emergency situation, mm -hmm. that the need to collaborate. We need to collaborate uh, because we are producing information that sometimes overlap one with the other. Uh, EGM, ICME, universities. We are we have to work together and. During the emergency, forget the competition. We know that the, we compete because we need uh, our funds uh, depend on our publications. But uh, I think it's time uh, during the, the disaster, during the emergency, to work together and to share all the information, all the data. We have. Uh, I was working in the lava flow simulation, and I know the IGN is also working on that, but we are not working together, and we have to be more efficient, and this is something that we have to learn from this emergency. From the scientists. There's also a lot of jealousy because, for example, there's very few people who are allowed. Uh, and I think most of the the, the muestreo, mm -hmm. very close up, is, is actually done by the, the army in their protective suits. And then IGME is also doing a lot of um, muestreo. Mm -hmm. But there's frustration that they have preferential access, mm -hmm. but then that material isn't made, it isn't shared, so yeah. that other scientists can't work on that. Is that fair? Yes, yeah, so this is something that there is a fight no, between the volcanic and... Uh, and, uh, so, I am not involved in this uh, fight, so I cannot talk about too much about this. Maybe in Volcanas. No, not the same just them, but I'm just from um, yeah. uh, institutes from abroad as well. They're interested to know whether they, the very uh, restricted information that's during an emergency mm -hmm. is clear that it's difficult to publish everything because then you have everybody analyzing in know, real time and coming uh, to different no, no. conclusions and that that makes it difficult to manage an emergency mm -hmm. but for the future all yeah. that preferential access that they have had should that information be made those okay one thing that we can improve during emergencies not here in canary island but everywhere maybe in hawaii they, are, they have it better is uh, to concentrate all the information in a hub. They have a hub in La Palma nowadays. Antonio Bermejo, I know him, and he has a hub with all the information. But uh, not everybody put the information in this hub. And this is something that we have to innovate and everybody go together and say, I'm even to make a declaration or something and say, we are going to put all the, my data in this hub. I know that many scientists are doing it in this university, and I, I, I am doing it. So but everybody has to be agree in doing something um, without interest, personal interest, but yeah, for the common interest. And the hub is a good idea. The hub is an excellent idea, mm -hmm. but do you think scientists sometimes forget that they're working for the good of the people? 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget that we are working with uh, the common and the good of people. Yes. And uh, we, from the universities and all, all the research centers, we can't forget that we work for society and we work in society for society. No, we are not working to only for science. Science is an, an abstraction. We are working to improve the society. This is. So one of the things is there have been a lot of egos, a lot of people using preferential access Everybody should work together, not just during the emergency, but going forwards, maybe. Uh, yes. Or is that too difficult? Is that an, a utopia to think that <laughs> the emergency? Everybody's going to be happy yeah. and play nicely. I think during the emergency, we have to work together and forget about uh, the competition. This is, this is a message. Yes. Yeah, well. uh, and even the science progress doing it. So in the, during the emergence, we have to forget the channels that we have nowadays in the, in the science that mainly are the journals where we communicate our ideas, the congress. This part, we can put the congress and the journals here. And now we are going to work for the emergency. And we are going to put all the information together, everything we think. And, the, and it has to be an, an agency that coordinate all the scientific efforts during the emergency. Yes, because this is one of the things that I have in my head, and again, it might be utopia, but I've seen scientists come from, I don't know, Cornell University, and they've come to do a bit of research here. But obviously they don't have all the equipment and all the, they can't do all the sampling that's done here. Um, so should this hub, after the emergency, where mm -hmm. everybody puts all the product of their research, should that always be available to anybody who wants to do research? Because sometimes it's more interesting to have more eyes on the same science because they might come mm -hmm. to different conclusions or they might pull in other... I know, that, I know that a lot of institutions are doing it. They come here, they make samplings and they put all the data and share the data. But I know that uh, there are institutions that are not doing it, scientific uh, institutions. So the, uh, this is something to improve. Yeah. And could uh, it be tied yeah. to the Pevolka permit, perhaps? And they, they are obligated to do it. They are obligated for Pevolka. For the scientific committee is the only um, part uh, in this uh, emergency, in this disaster, that has to share the information by the channels established in the plan and it is not happening but is, uh, what is correct is doing in that way. So what's your view of scientists who maybe come here for the spectacle? Yeah, this is more difficult because they are not uh, belong to um, uh, to the context of uh, Spain, they, you mean the people who come from other universities? Scientists university? who come from other universities on paper, yes, I'm going to study the mechanism of the how the eruption starts, but actually they're here because they just want to get close to a volcano. In that case, it's quite difficult, but they should be obligated uh, to do it. If, if they are in La Palma, when they go to to the areas where the volcano is working, they uh, they need uh, to ask for permission in this moment okay you have the permission but you have to put the data and the information in this hub this is what we have to do um, so we just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about tenerife now because mm -hmm. uh, again in the past when we talk about tenerife being a volcanic island and ben was one of the students here this summer working with mm -hmm. professor rich brown on the explosive volcanic index and mm -hmm. identifying some of the mandas del sur and perhaps there okay. were more explosive events than we thought of so we do have to think about tenerife as a as a volcanic destination as well um what does the plan look like for tenerife you've worked on the plan for tenerife what what does it look like and um, well the current plan uh, of Tenerife for um, volcanic emergencies are quite sophisticated. What is bad in the plan, what they don't like in this plan or in any other, but they are, um, they are 
they are good for the law. They, they are respecting the law, and the law say how we have to make the plans. And in this, uh, in this sense, the plan is perfect. But the plan is not flexible. If you look at the emergency in La Palma, every day, every day everything changed. The mouth, and the lava, the asses, the weather. And you have uh, the good plan has to need a system to, uh, to change the risk analysis all the time. And if, if I have to invest money in develop a plan, I would prefer to develop this system before the plan. I think it's more important. But the plan is good. The plan trying to reflect all the probabilities. And of course, the explosive, uh, an explosive uh, episode of a volcano is possible. Is it reflected in the plan? It is reflected in the plan. It's, desc it's described. It. But uh, when we have uh, to point out uh, the most probably uh, eruption, we only are looking at the historical eruptions, Stromborian, Hawaiian, you know, Hawaiian. In the case of an explosive uh, eruption, <laughs> everything is going to be very complex in the island. But it could happen. But a local plan, a local plan, but because the, the, the plan is for local resources, for response. We don't have local resources to respond to an explosive uh, situation. We don't have. So, if we are doing a local planning, we can uh, we can uh, we can plan uh, a situa a, a, this situation because we don't have resources. So, this is something that has to be planned at the regional level and even at national level. I mean, the problem in Tenerife, uh, I think, is on the one hand, we know there is an explosive history here, mm -hmm. but we don't actually know how many events there have been. We haven't had enough research. So, first of mm -hmm. all, we thought there was one caldera. Now we think, oh, there's three calderas. Caldera, the last one was 180,000 years ago. Well, Montaña Blanca. Uh, Montaña Blanca, 10,000 year, uh, years. And even three thousand years ago. Between the 10,000 years in zero, we have a lot, and this is one of them, Montaña Blanca. So Montaña Blanca was a subplane. Yes, and, and that and mm, the what is the only thing that we can do? Evacuation. And this is it is possible to evacuate all the people that we need to evacuate in case uh, in case of explosive uh, volcano. It is possible, but um, these plants are not able to, to prepare the evacuation of so many people. We are talking about an emergency where the national level has to act, the army, um, even the Red Cross, they don't have the shelter for so many people. We were thinking about it and all, uh, the only uh, solution uh, was the, the ferries, yeah. the boat to go by boat and escape in ships, but it's quite difficult. Um, or go everybody to other part of the island, but how many days? So it is something that if it is uh, going to happen in Tenerife, I don't know, but it, it's not planet. And actually, the problem is we don't we haven't done enough science up in the caldera but to understand. But we have a plan for a meteorite or of our uh, in in the geological history of the islands. A lot of lands, big landslides, debris flows occur in the past and tsunamis. But we haven't plans for it, so it's difficult to plan to pl to make a plan thinking about this. Uh, catastrophic uh, events. I think no, nobody has it. Even people with with stratovolcanoes is different. Hmm. Like Tayde, of course. Mm -hmm, yeah. 
But the Strato Volcanos that every 20 years or every 10 years are doing something similar. But even in, this, uh, in, in these places, in South America, in Los Andes, for example, or in Italy, they, they have plans to be ready for an explosion? I don't know, but I don't think. But my, my question was, uh, maybe by recognizing that it's a possibility, mm -hmm. that would then encourage more investment into the science of understanding whether the activity that was going on was yes. going to lead to an effusive of or course. an explosive eruption. Because that's the problem. Of we course. might know that there's activity going on, but we don't know if it's going to be effusive okay. or explosive. Okay, of course, the, the, we have to invest uh, in, uh, in research. To the, for to know exactly what kind of ex, uh, eruption is going to, to to be, but we were talking about emergency planning. Okay, so this is different. Sorry, no, but in terms uh, of the emergency plan, if the emergency yeah. plan doesn't even say that we could have an explosive eruption, everybody again, just like the mm -hmm. little green, everybody thinks everything's fine. Mm -hmm. If the emergency plan only talks of effusive eruptions, historic eruptions. Mm -hmm. Again, we think, ah, oh, you know, we don't even to even think about an yeah. explosive, and there's no, yeah. in, no. If you read the the plans, the local plans of the islands, if you read it, when I describe the risk, the explosive volcanoes are describing there. But when we have to make maps for possible eruptions, we are we make the maps uh, thinking about the most frequent uh, kind of eruption. And this is what we do. But this is not only the risk analysis that we do in the plans. We make a descriptions of all uh, possible uh, kind of eruptions. And they are there, describe it. So you have to read it. But when we have to make a not flexible plan, uh, maps, a fixed maps, we have to make a maps with areas that have to be evacuated based on the typical eruption, historical eruption that we have. This is different. So in the plans are reflected the explosive episodes and this possibility is in the plan. Um, but yes, when we have to prepare areas for evacuation, we are only thinking about the uh, likely areas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and which areas? Uh, you think are most likely in your plan? In Tenerife. In Tenerife. In Tenerife, uh, where the historical uh, episodes occurred in the past is in the, uh, the, the reef of uh, Abeque, in the north, uh, in the northwest. So of the, the northwest island, reef zone. Santiago del Teide, uh, El Tanque, Icon de los Vinos. Uh, this area is actually the most likely, but we know that in uh, in the past, in in the 18th century, we have an eruption in Weimar, Arafo. So it's quite difficult to know. But uh, uh, if you are making a plan, you have to say where, and it's quite difficult. And yes, where is most likely to be an eruption in this area? And you have to take it to, to make a decision if you want to make a map. Because this is the problem that scientists never say where. And okay, we have to make our bet based on knowledge. So let me ask mm -hmm. you this. So if we took the outline, which we were looking on your computer earlier, um, mm -hmm. of the uh, volcanic eruption now in La Palma, and we overlay it in that area of El Tanque, God, Santiago mm -hmm. de Teide, there's a lot of people in the way. Yeah, lots of people, um, but not uh, not like in Santa Cruz de Tenerife. And so it's not the worst scenario. Okay. But how many That's people might be caught up in that? Uh, in more than sixty thousand people, more than fifty thousand. Um, when we are past twenty thousand, is it really prominent to evacuate twenty thousand? In La Palma now, um, I don't know. 5,000, 6,000, but we know by experience that most of the people have a, another residency to go and not everybody has to be evacuated on a shelter. 
if it, if we have to evacuate everybody to a shelter, we have in spaces to do it. So the plants uh, know it, and we know by experience that everybody has a, a relative or a friend, and not everybody goes to a shelter or a second residency because in that case we have any resources to respond to a we massive evacuation. have a lot of very evacuations. nice five-star hotels that perhaps no, could... No, uh, the only, uh, is in the plan also, to use all the touristic areas of the south of the island um, to host the people. This is in the plans also. And all, uh, now in La Palma, is, the people is uh, um, in the hotel. No? Yeah, okay. Well, but then the problem there is that they're a long way away from the town, the kids can't go to school, they don't have money for the petrol. Uh, it's not, it's for, not easy. It's, it's not, not easy. It's not for, for many days, no. no. But okay, but the government now is building houses, no? Yes. So this yes. is the solution. Yes. But it's difficult. Uh, yes. We never lived it before. No. In the no. Thank you no. very much. So <laughs> just as a, a final uh, thought. Is there something we need to do better? What do we need to do better to be better prepared? I think that we have to improve the early system warning. This is one. The other is the education. The education. Everybody has to know the plans, the emergency plans. And we have uh, to make a better awareness about all the risks that we are living today, volcanic, climate change, landslides, hydrometeorological events. We have not to, uh, to be afraid because we need to live every day. But we have to know what, what uh, is possible that is going to happen in the future and we have to be prepared, it, but uh, not to be alarmist, just knowing what to do and what uh, are the messages that they have to follow and where can I find the information, these kind of things. And, uh, and I think with that we are, we are going to improve a lot. So if anybody wants to have a look at these plans, where can they go? And now the plans are public. It should be public uh, on internet. If you look in Google, you are going to find the, the emergency plans of Tenerife. La Palma, I don't know, <laughs> but we make a lot of information for La Palma. After the plans, we, we make uh, um, like a summary of the Sorry. plan uh, with the, and they are using it. So all the information that they are delivering to people were made by the university and they have it. All, everything that is not uh, inserted with people, many of this information were prepared in La Palma for us. And just in one sentence, can you give me a message of hope? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, very important, it's very important. Yeah? Uh -huh. And if you want to deliver it to the camera, uh -huh. one sentence, one message of hope about everything we've been talking about moving forward. Well, we have to be hope because in the world every day, uh, there are many disasters and we know by experience that the societies and people and communities are able to um, to uh, recovery so what we have uh, to think is that in the future we are going to uh, to be better than now than now because now we are living a disaster and we have to be resilient we have to think that nowadays, in this complex society, with so many hazards, uh, it's important to be prepared before, uh, before the disasters, to be educated, uh, to have information, to be prepared, prepared for the next, for the next uh, event, volcanic event, but maybe other kind of um, disaster. We are going to be able uh, to build that build back better and to recover our, uh, our economy. So this is what is important to think now is in the hope for the future. And should people worry about coming to Tenerife? The people, uh, we live from tourists. Um, 
most of our economy is based on uh, the touristic activities. And we encourage people to travel to the islands, to Tenerife, to La Palma, because we are prepared to be here is, uh, now, is safe. So we invite and, uh, to encourage people um, to travel to the island because now we have all the necessary assistance uh, to enjoy uh, a visit in the island. So it's totally sure. How warm? Oh, so how warm are the Tenerife people to visitors? Yeah, in Tenerife and in Canary Island in general, so we are very warm. We are very kind people, and this is our first resource. Uh, also, the weather, you know. But uh, uh, here, uh, you can enjoy uh, our natural resources, our landscapes but mainly the people. The people here is very warm, yes.